This one is uh, uh, by Professor Ross McKittrick. Yes. And it was just published. It's, it's a hot topic because the history of this is that it's called social cost of carbon. I mean, people may know the history in April 2nd of 2007, the U.S. Supreme Court has to decide. It was a Massachusetts, state of Massachusetts, actually a bunch of states suing the EPA to try to say whether we should regulate uh, carbon dioxide. Remember, CO2 is a gas of life. It is a biological truism. It's a fact that you cannot change. But a lot of these activists trying to insist, just like the way that they claim CO2 causes global warming, but they try to insist that the beneficial impact in biological sense and environmental sense and ecological sense should be overwhelmed by this global warming impact. So they actually challenge, so Supreme Court make a decision five to four for this basically label CO2, atmospheric air CO2 as an air pollutant so that US EPA should regulate. So, and then they, and in 2009, immediately the EPA, which is run by the Obama administration at that time, insists then they put out a thing called CO2 endangerment findings. And then that's where they, they try to say that, you know, the social cost of carbon is extremely high. There's all negative, no positive. So, Ronan, can you just explain yeah, that? Yeah, well, most well, familiar with this paper. So this is just as you can see in the abstract. I don't know if your people are listening, they might. Not, if, you, if you're watching the screen, we're sharing these slides um, of, of this. But they had like, uh, so it was specifically in the Biden administration uh, went and updated its the social cost of carbon, carbon being carbon dioxide emissions. And they did that based on a study uh, that was... Done in 2014, original, yeah. Yeah, well, the, the, the up, there was a paper in 2017 that calculated right. the social cost of carbon for agriculture using a study by Chaloner et al. 2014. Mm -hmm. And that had contained uh, nearly 2,000 uh studies itself right. it was a yeah. big meta-analysis yeah, yeah. But, it's about relationship between temperature atmospheric carbon dioxide and crop yield you know like corn yes. weed and so on and so forth and yeah uh, yeah you can see what ross mcgetrick really really a brilliant uh what you call uh economist and uh, climate kind of scientist ross mcgetrick is very good even in terms of data analysis and, and climate science actually very knowledgeable so he went and looked at this suspicious study by the way so what? Well, what it, they found is that the study, they re, he realized that he could update a lot of the uh, studies from, the, from that original one. Data that there was actually information available that the authors hadn't used. So when he did that, he was able to increase... Yeah, he added 40% more data to the database. I mean, it was 860 increased by 1,200, right? So yeah. it's 40% increased. and and shows that the, the conclusion changed completely. That's what is so interesting. Yeah, it shows you so, that you, you don't pick a selective data set, okay? And yeah. then trying to say that, oh, here's our conclusion. But it's just non-robust in statistical sense. And uh, being a statistician, I think uh, Ross McGittrick is rather serious. Again, we are not, we're not trying to promote that you should run science by narrative, doctrine, and so on and so forth. You just have to base on real data and complete sets well, of data. An important, Good data set. an important point here for people that are following along and trying to make figure out, are, what do I do? What this study has done is that it's shown that <laughs> the science can change, the, the conclusions can change, when the data is updated and it can change quite dramatically so this is an interesting thing so this study more et al 2017 had gone and used this challenger data set mm -hmm. um, and they had concluded that the crop yields are going to re reduce dramatically uh, with any amount of global warming and then that then was added into the uh, US EPA's estimate of how, how expensive carbon emissions are. And that's then going to influence government policies. And, uh, and, uh, and a lot of cases... By, by the way, all of us will be extremely rich if we, if we follow their logic. Social <laughs> cost of carbon. Because 
Oh, here's ten thousand dollars, buddy. I mean, <laughs> this is how that kind of a you know really bad, bad movement to try to just because they want to regulate, they they have to invent this kind of artificial thing called social cost. Just just to uh, summarize what Ross found was two things. One right. that by using a more complete data set, he got different trends. Than yeah, Roland, show the graph here. Yeah. But yeah. the other thing that was left out was that by increasing the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it acts as a fertilizer, which increases the crop yield. So yeah. in, in greenhouses, for example, they artificially increase the amount of greenhouse or carbon dioxide in the greenhouse so that they can increase their right. I, will, I will put it this way. Ross' conclusion is less surprising than, than the startling conclusion mm -hmm. by this this other previous uh, researcher who are rather not careful or have some other opinion in mind that is very strange, actually. This is why it's completely taken up by the all these politicians and trying to force the EPA to make it that, oh, it's, it's increasing yeah, carbon dioxide well, going to cost money. Yeah, just, to show this, just ex explain this, this kind of, because they don't like yeah. showing big graphs, but this is the amount of warming. And this is the average of all of the studies in the old one that the US EPA effectively used, the blue. The blue, yeah. And this is the change in crop yield for maize, millet, and sorghum. This rice. is for rice. This is wheat. for soybean. This is wheat. And you can see for all of these crops, even a little bit of global warming in degrees Celsius, uh, you get a reduction in crop yield for wheat, for soybean, for rice. No interest in your tips up there at the end. They don't explain that. Right. And then the maize, millet, and sorghum, which is huge things. Now, uh, McKittrick's update using getting adding in more information. 40% more data. To that, so that yeah. actually you will expect an increase in yield with modest warming and, and even substantial warming, up to five degrees for all four of these crops. Now, the... Uh, in McKittrick's paper, it explicitly says at the end that they're just he's just looking at the agricultural the effects on crop yields, and so beyond the scope to look at the impacts of global warming more generally. But this he they, he points out that the current US EPA uh, social cost of carbon. Is heavily weighted. It's mostly due to this, uh, to these blue results, and that's gone now. Um, so, well, uh, that just give you a thing. Don't U.S. EPA should be updating <laughs> their CO2 yeah. well, 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 finding? That is a controversy now, but I hope they get to do it because this is how science should inform policy rather than policy inform, uh, changing science. I mean, yeah. it's a very good, good perspective.